bathed in the shadows of a century's worth of conflict and turmoil, a mighty republic, which was now an empire, experienced a long-awaited calm, signaling the dawn of a profound transformation. In a humble city in the corner of this young empire, nestled in the Mediterranean's breeze, a child was born one who was destined to so profoundly uproot the very fabric of our spiritual understanding. Hello, and welcome to Impactful Moments, where we explore some of the most, you guessed it, impactful moments in human history. In this video, we will discuss the life and crucifixion of Jesus, a period seen by many as the most significant religious historical period in human history. In the aftermath of the decline of the Seleucid Kingdom, one of the major powers following Alexander the Great's death, a power vacuum developed in Asia Minor. Attempting to fill this void, Mithridates led the Pontic Kingdom's regional expansion, engaging in a series of Mithridatic wars with Rome. In 63 BCE, General Pompey and Rome emerged victorious, ending the Pontic power in the area, prompting Rome's conquest of additional eastern territories, including the territory of Judea. Rome asserted its influence in Judea, Hyrcanus II, Hyrcanus II, in Judea, installing leaders, initially Hyrcanus II and later Herod in 37 BCE, establishing Judea as a client kingdom, which, while not directly under Roman control, lay between Syria and Egypt, two valuable Roman provinces. King Herod, historically viewed as both a rebuilder of Judea, but also as a cruel, self-obsessed, and likely paranoid king, took many precautionary measures to ensure his continuity as king of the Jews. During his rule, a Nazarene couple, meaning from Nazareth, Joseph and his wife Mary, gave birth to a boy that they named Yeshua, Hebrew for Savior. The following is a description of the life of that child, as per the most popular sources known as the Canonical Gospels, or Good News, written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and dating to between 30 and 70 years after Yeshua's life. While there is significant scholarly and religious debate on the historicity of these Gospels, as well as differing genealogies and details across the Gospels, they do generally tell the same story and have become so ingrained within world society that they are considered a history of their own. To take a step back, centuries before this birth, prophets like Isaiah and Micah had foretold of a savior or messiah from the Davidic line. Generations later, under King Herod, while Rome did allow the Jews in the area to maintain their rituals, there were harsh taxation rules and a sense of control that prompted many to cite the Messianic prophets. While the Jewish Second Temple still stood, the Jews felt both religiously and politically unfulfilled, longing for a higher level of autonomy and spirituality with the final redemption. Among these messianic calls, sometime between 6 and 4 BCE, the aforementioned Mary, who was betrothed to Joseph from the Davidic line, was informed by the angel Gabriel that she would carry the child of the Holy Spirit, and was then found to be pregnant, despite having no relations with Joseph. Initially frustrated, Joseph contemplated divorcing Mary, but was reassured in a dream that the pregnancy was not due to Mary's infidelity. He was urged to keep Mary as his wife, and was told to name the child Yeshua, or, in its anglicized Greek pronunciation, Jesus, as he would be the savior of the Jews. Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem for a Roman census, where Mary gave birth. Due to the unavailability of suitable lodging, she wrapped her baby in cloth and placed him in a manger, a trough for feeding animals. The Gospels note that an angelic call proclaiming the birth of the Savior went out to local shepherds, who came to visit the child. Later, three wise men, known as the Magi, having followed a guiding star from the east, approached King Herod, asking where they could find the future king of the Jews. Herod, feeling his power threatened, requested that the Magi report back once he was found so that he could quote-unquote worship the child, his true intentions being much more sinister. The Magi continued following the star to Jesus, bestowing him with gifts and honor before departing via an alternate route as not to notify Herod. Joseph, in a dream, was then warned of an impending Herodian massacre and instructed to escape to Egypt, which his family did. Herod, notified that the prophecies had pointed to Bethlehem as the birthplace of the Messiah, ordered the killing of all males below the age of two, known as the Massacre of the Innocents. But Jesus was already gone. Upon Herod's death, Joseph and Mary returned to Nazareth. 
During the hidden or silent years of Jesus' life, the Gospels provide limited information, largely leaving a gap in the narrative. The accounts resume with Jesus' transition into the period of his public interactions, known as his ministry, in roughly 28-29 to 29 CE. The ministry began when Jesus approached a Jewish man conducting ritual spiritual baths, or baptisms, in the Jordan River in anticipation of the Messiah. While feeling initially unworthy, this man, John the Baptist, eventually agreed to baptize Jesus. The Gospels speak of a profound moment during the baptism, where the heavens opened, a spirit descended, and a divine voice declared him the Son of the Spirit. Following the baptism, in preparation for his ministry, Jesus was led to the wilderness. After fasting for 40 days and in extreme hunger, he faced temptations from Satan, including calls to turn a stone into bread and satisfy his hunger, test God's protection by jumping from a ledge, and an offer of unparalleled power in exchange for worshiping Satan. In each case, Jesus affirmed his faith in God and rejected Satan's temptations. Jesus' ministry, which covers the most significant portion of the Gospels, is largely grouped into three categories. The first was the gathering of the disciples, initially focused on the region of Galilee, but ultimately extending to diverse social and religious demographics across different areas of Judea. Of his many disciples, twelve, known as the Apostles, were particularly noted within his inner circle. The second was his performance of miracles, which largely include healing the sick, but also some more popularized miracles, such as raising the dead, turning water into wine, walking on water, and feeding the hungry with limited resources. And the third was Jesus' teachings and sermons, in which he emphasizes, often through parables, love, belief, and inner intent over action. The most notable of his teachings, known as the Sermon of the Mount. A pivotal moment near the end of Jesus' life occurred when he brought his disciples to a mountain and revealed to them that he was the Son of the Holy Spirit. Per the Gospels, he appeared to them in a heavenly transfigured form, alongside Moses and Elijah, explaining the divine plan of redemption, as well as his faith to be crucified and ultimately resurrected, but tells his disciples not to spread his identity until after his resurrection. The climactic final week of Jesus' life, often referred to as Passion Week, is described in significant detail, covering close to one-third of the Gospels. The narrative begins with Palm Sunday, marking his triumphant entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, a fulfillment of prophecy. Amidst the festivity and preparation for Passover, the tensions between Jesus and the established Jewish authorities, known as the Sanhedrin, intensified. Jesus, known for his provocative sermons and extraordinary actions like raising Lazarus from the dead just before entering Jerusalem, set the stage for the conflict. Once in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the Jewish temple and disrupted the business of money changers, condemning hypocrisy among the Jewish elders who questioned his authority, deepening the existing animosity. Knowing that his actions would be seen as heretical to the Jewish leadership, and aware of his impending fate, Jesus gathered his disciples for a poignant final meal, known as the Last Supper. During this symbolic occasion, he introduced the Eucharist, associating bread and wine with his body and blood, a ritual observed to this day. He also gave a sermon preparing his disciples for his death, and predicted the betrayal by one of his apostles. After the meal, Judas Iscariot, the betraying disciple foretold by Jesus, led Roman guards to the Garden of Gethsemane. There, dramatic events unfolded as either Judas betrayed Jesus identifying him with a kiss, or, according to the Gospel of John, Jesus identified himself to the Romans. Subsequently, Jesus was apprehended on charges of claiming to be the king of the Jews. As Judea had become an official Roman province in 6 CE, this was seen as a challenge to Roman authority. Initially, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court, tried Jesus for heretical actions and subversion of the nation, and eventually turned him over to the Roman governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate. Herod Antipas, son of the previously mentioned Herod, who was the Galilean ruler, tried Jesus as he fell into his jurisdiction. Following a discussion between the Sanhedrin and the Romans, Jesus was ultimately sentenced to crucifixion, in which the accused was hung on a cross and left to die. Roman soldiers then flogged Jesus, dressed him with a crown of thorns to mock his kingly status, and led him down the Via Dolorosa to Calvary, or Golgotha to be crucified. 
There are gospel discrepancies on the details following the crucifixion, but they generally note that several days after Jesus was buried, his tomb was found empty and unsealed. Jesus then appeared to either Mary Magdalene, a staunch follower, or to other apostles, and met with the remaining apostles in either Jerusalem or Galilee. Following this rendezvous and the final physical meeting with his followers, the Gospels note that Jesus ascended to heaven. The years following Jesus' crucifixion marked an initially slow but incredibly impactful change to the religious landscape in the Roman Empire. Following the Jewish independence achieved through the Hasmonean revolt against the Hellenists, Judaism underwent a significant factionalization into three main groups, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes, with a latter emergence of a fourth group known as the Zealots. In the aftermath of Jesus' life, a new sect emerged, as he gathered several hundred followers. Initially, his apostles, led by Peter, served as missionaries, spreading Jesus' teachings within diverse Jewish communities. Over the subsequent decades, a pivotal figure named Paul, Hebrew name Saul, initially an ardent opponent of Jesus' teachings, spoke of a profound transformation and began spreading the gospel to more diverse regions, including to non-Jews. The Council of Jerusalem, held around 50 CE, was crucial in this evolution, as it decided that non-Jews who were brought into the fold were not obligated to adhere to certain laws of the Old Testament, including kosher diets, circumcision, Sabbath observance, and others. This marked a crucial shift, signifying the transition of these followers from a Jewish sect to a distinct religion. The decades following Jesus' life saw Christians facing persecution throughout the Roman Empire. However, despite these challenges, the spread of Jesus' teachings continued. The destruction of the Second Jewish Temple by the Romans and the subsequent diaspora of Jewish communities to different areas of the empire helped accelerate the dissemination of Christian teachings. It can be argued that the story of Jesus' life has become one of, if not the, most impactful occurrences in human history, particularly from a religiously historical perspective. With Christianity's acceptance within the Roman Empire in the 4th century CE, its sway began expanding within Roman borders. A combination of its establishment as the state religion several decades later, and then with the empire's fall, established the church as the unifying force of Europe. During the Age of Exploration, this influence transcended continents, shaping the lives of billions globally. The ascendancy of Christianity, followed by the later establishment of Islam, wrought profound changes in the nature of warfare. Prior religions were either too small to be the drivers of major, lasting conflicts, or played second fiddle to their state's expansionist motivations. The rise of these faiths meshed their significance and expansionist motivations with the concept of divinity and worship as each state's fulcrum. The eventual clash between these new religions would lead to centuries of conflict with religious belief as the motivating factors, and has resulted in spheres of religious influence with Christianity in Europe and Islam in West Asia, the Middle East, and North Africa that largely stand to this day. The life of Jesus, and consequently Christianity, which has spanned over 2,000 years, has left an unparalleled impact on countless aspects of both the lives of its adherents and society as a whole, ranging from the profound influence of Christmas, with its global, religious, social, and commercial implications, to the years of the calendar adopted by a vast majority of the world, Christianity's presence is ubiquitous, with nearly 2.5 billion followers worldwide representing hundreds of denominations, Christianity has surpassed its humble origins and stands as the world's largest religion, encompassing over one quarter of the global population. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Your support helps us to continue creating captivating, impactful historical content. Thanks for watching.